First up is Martin, with something he hopes will have the dealers roaring for more. The item I brought today is traditional Chinese headwear. I have used this a couple of times for gigs with my band. Before taking on the dealers, Martin is having his piece valued by expert Simon, who's been in the auction business for more than 30 years. <sighs> Would that be part of a... Is that meant to be a dragon? More of a lion. A lion. Who would have thought? Yes. Hello, Martin. Thank you for bringing this lion in. Oh, that's OK. W where did you find him? Well, I found him at an auction in the New Forest. I think I remember it being around 30 to 40 pounds. OK. Yeah. Are, you, are you a collector of lions? <laughs> um, not particularly. My band wrote a song about them. What band? Powdered Cows. Powdered Cows? Yes. Right. And we've uh, got a song called Lion, Lion. So yeah. I saw that and I thought, great. I'll great. have that. You associate the dragon, don't you, with the dragon dance. The lion dance basically is one person with the head yeah. and then another person behind with the, with the back of the body. Traditionally associated with the Chinese New Year. The body actually is papier-mâché. Yeah. Got a bit of bamboo framing inside as well. You know, obviously painted and decorated, each one with its own little quirks and characteristics, really. You sort of wear it, obviously hold it above your head. Yep. And away you'd go with your Chinese New Year dancing and merriment. How old do you think it might be? It could be as late as 70s, 1970s, 80s. The only reason I'm saying that is by just looking at some of the visible script of the newspapers inside and going by the typesetting. But to be honest, I don't think the age matters with it too much in this case. You know, it's, it's the visual impact, isn't it? My, my head's worrying. I think it's going to do really well. Yeah, They're going to love will. it. I think Mr Chinese Lion here will, will, will charm them next door, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he'll pique their interest. I can see Martin easily getting his money back and probably going up to maybe the £50 mark. How does that sound? Well, that sounds lovely. I think so, too. Yeah. You might roar up to 60 or maybe 70 Well, yeah, I'd be lying if I didn't want more than that. So. <laughs> Yes, Martin. <laughs> Great. So, to sum up... To sum up when Martin takes it next door, Chinese Lion, uh, mentioned the fact that it was probably made for the, for the New Year celebrations, papier-mâché, great visual object, highly collectible, and let it run. Let it run? Let, let it, it run. roar? Yes. I think you'd be great with this. I mean, I think all the leaders will be going like this. <laughs> <laughs> be clawing each other. Well, I hope so. OK. Best of luck. Cheers, thank you. We don't see many of those through the door, do we? I haven't seen... Have you ever seen one before? No. <laughs> <laughs> that eye's looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's trembling. Mm. He said that it could go up to about £50, but I'd always like a little bit more. I'm hoping that I'll be able to win them over. It's time for Martin to enter the bidding room, where King of Curiosities AD, or JB with an eye for the exotic, could be the dealers to target. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. What's your name? I, I'm Martin. Hello, Hi, Martin. Martin. And where are you, have you come from today? Um, I've come all the way from Christchurch in Dorset. What, with wow. that on your head? <laughs> um, yeah, it was pretty difficult driving, to be honest. <laughs> I was lucky I didn't get pulled over. Would you mind Tell revealing your face? <laughs> um, yeah. Can we see who's on the It's always good to have a mask in these times. Hey! hey. Martin! <laughs> Hello. That was a cracking entrance. <laughs> Thank you. What animal do we think it is? It's definitely a dragon. What does a dragon sound like? Looks like a puffer fish, but I don't know what a puffer fish would make. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, like... why on earth did you buy that? I've never seen one of those items before. It just had to be mine. So is it a Chinese festival, Master? Yeah. Yes, it's a traditional uh, Chinese um, lion. Oh. Lion? Lion. lion, of course. Lion? Sorry. Martin, I'm really sorry. It looks nothing like a lion. <laughs> that is a puffer fish. I've seen these at Chinese New Year and it's so much fun to watch. What year was it? Simon guessed that it might be anywhere from 1940s, perhaps up to 1970s, even as late as 80s, maybe. Have you ever used it? Have you gone out with it <laughs> in your head? 
<laughs> well, yes. <laughs> I was going to say. Martin, are you sure you want to sell? Well, I already have another helmet slash mask. I'll you put it on, and I think we could start the bidding. The lion's mask has got all the dealers on the prowl. But will any of them meet Simon's top valuation of £50? Right, Martin, can you hear me? Yep. I'm going to start the bidding at £10. <laughs> Moses, this would look so good in your shop. You got that wrong. 20. 30. 5. 40. Well, I'd be lying if I didn't say I'd like a little bit more. <laughs> 45. 50. Now you're wearing it, it's really starting to grow on me. But I can't pay you any more than £50, unfortunately. You look really, really dashing in that. I don't think I've got it in my heart to go any more than 50. That's such a fantastic piece for you to go out in. You go to Ascot, don't you? For Ladies' this is Day! perfect for Ascot. How much is that going to cost you? I don't know, about £250. There you go, half the price. <laughs> yeah, but you can't see my face. I am out. Oh. I love it, but I'm not bidding on it. You'll never see another one of these ever again. There's a reason for that. Yeah. <laughs> My final bid is £50 because nobody else wants to bid me higher. So do we have a deal? I think we have a deal, yes. Fantastic! Yay! Brilliant. <laughs> I had a grand entrance, but none of them were really biting except for AD. Martin, can you give us some idea of what it was valued at? Up to about £50. I feel quite happy and very pleased that I've sold it for perhaps 10, 20 pounds more than what I paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was different. I can't wait to drive home in my Mini and wear that. I'm going to be staying off the roads, I think. Seriously, is there anything you won't buy? Absolutely not. Up next is Pauline with a collection she hopes the dealers will fall head over heels for. The items I've brought uh, are all very different. I've collected them from different places. They're all together now in, in one box. This is the whole series. <laughs> it could quite easily be. You just slowly stand here and just look, go through each, each bit. You look quite excited about this. Well, I do. I, lo I love rummaging. Pauline, what have you done to us? <laughs> You set him into a sort of frenzy. His <laughs> eyes are spinning in opposite directions. I call that my casket of curiosities. What do you think of all this? Well, come back to me next week and I'll tell you. <laughs> Brilliant. It's, it's a bit like that, isn't it? Yes. I mean, there's some really choice items here. I mean, just to pick out a few to start with. I mean, this chappy jumped out at me straight away. Yeah. Oh. What we call a dog of foe, so a temple dog, temple lion. I think this would have been Attached perhaps the cover. To something. Yeah. Mm, I wondered. Of those big sensor, which is almost like an incense pot. Oh, okay. So he would have stood on top of that. Right. So that's Chinese bronze. Oh right. That's solid bronze that. And that probably dates 1870s, 1880s, that sort of uh, period. Oh, it's a wow. really nice thing. And then we come, I think, back to Europe, if if not Britain, but definitely Europe anyway. I, I don't know whether it's a door knocker or or just a handle. It's a right. difficult one to yeah. ask, but he's part of something. The casting on that is just absolutely yeah. gorgeous. And then the other thing that caught my eye was this uh, letter opener. I just, I just think the casting on that is just absolutely yeah. fantastic. Especially we've got this, um, like I can say, like a griffin or an eagle head with this uh, serpent wrapped around the, the handle there. There's so much else that is Solid silver, it's a piece of silver. You're making me want to keep them now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it just, just goes on. Simon, what is the valuation, please? I'm going to say that is at least £100 on its what? own. Wow. That is at least £50, £60 pounds on its own. Oh, Should we top these up? Yeah. The letter opener, I can see somebody paying £100 pounds for that. It's £260. Oh, wow. So, boom, 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 boom. I, I think you've got a good £400 there, Pauline. Wow. That's much more than I thought. Let's get some tips to convince them to pay you 400 plus, all right? Yes, OK. To be honest, you've got probably one of the nicest lots the dealers will have in front of them for a long time, so wow. they will be wowed by it. But okay. remember, Chinese bronze. Chinese Remember bronze. that. Remember, the handle is bronze as well. Yes. Letter opener. Quality of casting. Yeah. We've also got bits of silver. 
You've got everything a dealer would want. Pauline, I just can't wait to see what happens to this collection. Stand firm. You right. own that space, you own these goodies, and you won't let them go for under £400. Right, sir. Good. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Have you any favourites out of that lot? I just would take the whole lot. <laughs> I've got just a place for them at home, actually. I bought a cabinet at an Antiques Fair about six or seven months ago, and um, it's got nothing in it. <laughs> so I thought, oh, there you go. There you go. Gosh, it went much better than I thought. I shall definitely try my best, and I'm looking forward to meeting the dealers. Hello. Hi. Hello. So you have a little collection? There's a bit of a mix mash there. Ooh, I rather like that. He's cute. This is a letter opener, yes? Yes, yeah. Yeah. yes. It certainly looks valuable. It's not really my forte, but it's beautifully made. This is one of the most valuable items of the collection, and if you just Look at the detail on it, you can see why. Right, this bit, when I picked it up, mm -hmm. um, looked a bit French. Regarding age, it's really difficult to tell. I mean, it's bronze, it's got a good load of wear to it. I'm gonna guess it's late 18th century. Simon thinks it's 1850. Right, okay. And, and he thinks it's either a door knocker or, or a, a, a door handle. Do you know, whatever it is, it's a really interesting item and it's nice, and it's French. I mean, Oriental isn't really my sort of bag, but what I believe this is is probably a late 19th century Chinese bronze figurine of a foo dog. Simon thought it was 1870 to 1880, possibly off an incense burner. Obviously, with bronze items, they've got a good value. You get French bronzes, Oriental bronzes, whatever they are, they're always popular. I picked this up because I loved it. It reminds me of a kind of mythical beast. It just looks really, really unusual. I absolutely love it. So, as I specialise in metal, I can see you've got the letter opener, you've got the door knocker there, you've got a coin. They're all made of more precious metals, and I think they're going to be your winning items today. What a fantastic collection of things. Shall we all start bidding? The dealers seem to be attracted to different items in the collection. But with a high valuation of £400, Pauline's going to have to haggle hard. I'm going to chip in at 100 OK. Wow, that's really, really strong. 110. 120. 130. Keep going. 140. You're very quiet. <laughs> I'm a quiet guy. <laughs> 150. And the bronze and silver will be worth over 200 on its own, I would say. So I'm going to say 160. <laughs> I'm going to say I'm out at 160. The one-offs, you'll never see anything like any of them again. I'll go 165. Oof. Anyone else want to up that? All right, 170. OK, and anybody else? 180. Okay, 180. Yeah, we're getting. 190. Yeah. 195. Yeah. Ooh. 200. I am out on this one. I just want one thing on there, and I'm really hoping the person that gets it will sell it to me. Which so bit is it you want? Not telling you yet. But I'm out. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Where have we got to? 200. 200. We've only done two pieces. This Chinese bronze. That's 100. Right. You Paper evil. knife has got to be <laughs> 120. The knocker... Anyway, Paul, do you want to talk about... That's 320. <laughs> the silver alone's worth about 50. I haven't touched the sides. Pauline, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> you have to remember that Nigel Havers is a fantastic actor and knows nothing about antiques. He does because Simon told him. What would you be happy with to walk away today? How about 300? How about 220? I think you can do a bit better than that. I will go 230. And I will go 235. There's only one person that's going to buy that today. And it's 235. 
And another five pounds to make it 240. 240 is a good round number. 240. Okay. You sure you don't want to up it to 250? 245. So near 250. I'm going to say I am out. Yeah, I think we should do, wrap it up at 245. Moses, if you move it up to 250, I'll give you 20 pounds for that Syrian horse. Nah. <laughs> Let's just stop mudding the waters. Pauline doesn't want to split this up. 245 for the whole collection. That's all I can do. Um Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> so what did Simon value it up? 400. 400. Now you feel bad, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> he seemed pleased, and I was pleased. I've got enough money now to go and find some more treasure. Yeah, so, nice. what are you going to sell me the horse and man? Just say no. Just Come on. In the corner. Possibly. <laughs> At the right price. Oh, it's all about the price. Third in today is Paul, with something he hopes will kindle the flames of desire in the dealer's hearts. Well, I brought these two items because they caught my eye. I like the shape and form. I was hoping at the price they were, I may be able to sell them on for a little bit more than I paid for them. I mean, they're pretty little things, aren't they? Yeah, they are. And, and don't you think copper and brass, when it's got light on it, it sort of I, shines? I, I, I always really. love that. Yeah. We'd better ask Paul yes, all about he knows about them. Hello there. Hello, Paul. Come and sit down, make yourself comfortable. Thank you. Where did you get them? I look out for them on social media. Is yeah. that what you do? You sort of find things and yeah, keep yeah. them for a bit and then move them on? Yeah, always aiming to sort of go higher. OK. Yeah. And how much did you pay for them? Not a lot. It would have only been about £40, I suppose. OK. They are pretty, aren't they? I like them. I like the shape and the form of them. What would you like to get for them? Possibly about £200. OK. I know who they're made by. Well, we have Simon here, <laughs> our expert. Yeah. Mm, so let's brilliant. ask him. Well, it's interesting Paul said he was drawn to the form and the design because that was the whole point, Paul, wasn't it? Yeah. Because these are aesthetic movement, basically, and that was the whole idea of the movement. There was, forget about the function of something, it was all about the beauty of it, the form, and to draw you in. Although I can't find a mark looking, I'm perfectly happy that they're by a company called Benham and Froude, and attributed to Christopher Dresser, yes. as you well know. Yeah. Um, and Christopher Dresser was, if you like, the leading light in the aesthetic movement, also arts and crafts and a real top, top quality design. So design. these are top drawn? Um, yes, indeed. But typical of that period, where you had a mixture of metals, you know, you've got the brass, this what we call a knop column. We've got that little bubble in the middle there. And then these uh, stained wooden handles. And then, obviously, circular copper base. And our little, it's almost like a flower head, isn't it? Yeah, this uh, yeah. copper drip tray, in effect. In the antiques world, whenever you see those, you know, Christopher Dresser. I think these are very collectible. They are indeed. These will be about, round about 1900, 1905, I reckon, right. round about that sort of date. Proper antiques. Proper antiques. Paul, are there any other questions you would like to ask Simon? What are they worth? I think they should appreciate the quality of them next door, Paul, to be honest, so hopefully you'll do really well. Personally, I see them in the range of 150 to 180. That sort of bracket is, is my feeling. Yeah, OK. So let's just, just go through some key points that when you go in there, you must remember to, to push with the dealers, and they are... Christopher Dresser, aesthetic movement, arts and crafts, iconic design, end of. Fantastic. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. Pleasure. Very much Bye. appreciate it. We haven't seen any brass and copper together for ages. No, no. And it always surprises me how brass and copper in general has taken a bit of a dive. Yeah. You know. Aesthetic. There we go. I like this movement. Aesthetic movement. It's very... So it's all about the beauty of the form. I'm very into that. Yeah. 
the valuation went very well. Christopher Dresser was one of the leading lights in the aesthetic movement, so I shall use that to my advantage in the bidding room. Hello. 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 How are you? Fine, thank you. Put these on there. And what have you bought us today, then? I brought a pair of Candle six, obviously, designed mm -hmm. by Christopher Dresser. Christopher Dresser, everyone does know in the antiques industry. Um, he's a big name. I've never seen this particular design before. I absolutely love them. They're really, really unusual. I see copper. I see brass. Um, is this some kind of ebony? It is wood. Yeah. What looks, type of wood? I'm not looks sure. like an ebony wood. I would style these completely on their own because they're absolutely stunning on their own um, and I think they could mix with anything they're, they're such a simple design but very very beautiful definitely got my eye on those <laughs> so they're really unusual design I really like the petal pattern at the top and I like the fact that they've got handles on as well you don't often see candlesticks with with handles that look like this anyway is there a reason why they're not signed if they're by a particular designer? Yeah, Christopher? Uh, Christopher Dresser was actually the designer, but they're actually produced by a company in Sheffield. This is the kind of design I would imagine in Liberties, yeah. somewhere like that. So yeah. would, did he design He was very Liberties? much at the forefront of the uh, aesthetics movement. Mm. You know, it wasn't just candlesticks, it was all sorts of things. Did Simon touch on the exact date of these at all? Yeah, it's early, early 1900s to 1910. Brilliant, thank you. Yeah. So I think we've all taken a little bit of a shine to the, the candlesticks, and it's about time we got a bit in. The candlesticks, thought to be early 1900s, have been valued at 150 to 180 pounds. Over to Paul to see if he can top that. I'll start the bidding, and I'll start at 80 pounds. Fresh again. That's a good bid. Certainly not. It's a starting point. It's a starting point. Ninety pounds. One hundred pounds. One ten. I'd rather take them home for that. It's telling you. No. Should we speed this up a bit? Okay. Should we go to one hundred and fifty? You're getting a lot closer. One sixty. At that, I am going to say. I am out of the bidding. I'm going to go out. I'll push it to 170. I think I'm out at that price. OK. Thank you. 180. That's more than I was looking for. And at that price, I am out. 180. What do you say? I'll take it. Fantastic. Fantastic. Brilliant. Well done. Can I ask you what Simon valued them at? He valued them at 150 to 180. He's a clever boy, isn't he? What did you originally pay for them? I paid 40 pounds. 40 pounds. Wow. I knew it wasn't wow. going to be much. What a buy! In the end, Lucy brought them. Uh, she absolutely fell in love with them. The minute you walked in, I said, "I'm going to have those." <laughs> That's a nice deal, Lucy. You've Bye. done. Yeah, good. They, they are nice and I hope you enjoy them. We both were happy. I got what I was looking for and she got something she absolutely fell in love with. Thank you. Thank you, mate. Bye. 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 Next would-be seller is Andrew with a piece he hopes will be just right for the dealers. The item I've brought in today is basically a large wooden box. It opens up and it is a lovely decorative item. Unless I'm very much mistaken. <laughs> I know what Simon. you're going to say. <laughs> is that a box? It is. It's a rather grand one, though. It's a isn't very it? grand box. Anyway, Andrew, let's ask him. He'll know more about it, mm. I'm sure. Hello there. Nice to meet you. Thank you for coming to the bidding room. It's a pleasure. And bringing this lovely box. It is very nice. I saw it on a, an online site and I just loved the look of it. I'd never ever seen anything like it. And it looked like the craftsmanship in it was absolutely amazing. I, I must sell dozens upon dozens of these every year through yeah, the auction. Of course. But, but this, this is top level. 
right from the brasswork, Nigel, around, which is yeah. in that sort of campaign style that we call it, where everything, these were designed basically to protect the box. Yeah. We got presumably the owner's name, a Captain Bloomfield. Officers and uh, high-ranking people of the day would take an item like this with them out on their jollies and trips abroad, etc., and use them, obviously, for the purpose we have here, as a, as a writing slope. Yeah. Simon, I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of these have uh, secret drawers in. Secret drawers, yeah. Would that mean this one on the side? I'm no, sure. no, there's another one inside. <laughs> and there you have... This keeps on giving, this box. It's unbelievable. It just keeps on giving. And there's some yeah, there's three in little drawers in there. Isn't that yeah. fantastic? Absolutely fantastic. I suppose we've got to find out, uh, are they the collectible? Of course, I think they will be. One of this standard, absolutely. Yeah. Anybody who collects writing slopes will have a good, good go at this. What do you think it's really worth, please? What do I think it's worth? I always like judge things on, on whether I, I'd, I'd want them, and I, I want this. <laughs> I think it's got to be next door because of the quality, because of the history. It's, it's, it's got to be 300 plus. Hasn't yeah, it? I think so too, absolutely, yeah, without a doubt. OK, now let's do a sum up, because it's important that you can remember all these things. Key points to take next door, and there's, yeah. there's quite a few of them, Nigel, with I, this one. Yeah. Top quality, mid-19th century, mahogany and brass bound, belonging to a captain, no less. Push the fact, all these secret drawers, Andrew, and the quality will, will, will sell it. Lovely. Nice to meet you. OK. Good luck. Thank you very okay. much. Bye. I'm really excited now. My strategy when I meet the dealers, I think I'll play it cool to start with and then slowly mention the bits of information that I've gleaned from Simon and I just hope I get a good price for it. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hello. 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 Nice to see you all. And where did you acquire this from? Um, I bought it on an internet uh, site. I like wood and the quality of this, the workmanship on this is, is outstanding. Yeah. To say that's possibly 200 years old. So from what I can see, I'm guessing that these little glass things here would have been for ink and this is possibly a writing set. It's known as a campaign writing slope. Ah, right, I see. Well, it's beautiful. Super quality. Looks like mahogany. Simon actually quoted that it was Brazilian mahogany. I absolutely love uh, anything campaign. Obviously, you've got the military connection with campaign stuff, which is why it's so popular. But the absolute best thing about this is you can link it to the original person it came from, whereas a lot of campaign stuff, they never actually have the names on them, so you, it's very, very difficult to trace it back to the original owner. But the fact that you've got the captain that this originally came from doubles its value. I have to say, it's times like this you just wish Antiques could talk, because it must have some fantastic stories to tell. Absolutely. If you look closely, but well, you'll have to look very closely, there is uh, a link to a secret drawer. Ah, so you left... That stops brilliant. the drawer sliding when you're carrying it. Secret drawer, what do you think would have been in here, then? Wine gums. And the quality of the wood, top quality. This is a beautiful decorative piece as well. The secret drawer is the, the real selling point. There's another one. <gasps> That's oh, not... JB. You're such oh. a tease. <laughs> you need the pin out of the drawer. This one here? Yeah. Is and it inside? The screws that hold that plating on the top face, middle screw, yeah. if you push it down with that pin, push it. It's open now. Just pull that inside now. Look inside and open that. There's a, there's a piece of wood that's moved. Oh. No, <gasps> on the front. <laughs> the front of, not that, the, the main box piece. You've got it here. The, the main box. This That's piece. it. Up to those drawers that you're looking at, there's a piece in front of you. No, this side. That's <laughs> it. Oh, That's oh, it. The other God. side. Oh, no, it's no, it's now. You, you, you're Can making you it rubbish. It's all, I've, seen, I've seen it move. It, you've moved it when I you heard it move. Oh, That's it. That's so exciting. And then you've got three little drawers in there. They're absolutely stunning little handles. Top quality. OK, then, should we start the bidding? Yes. Let's do it. The mahogany writing slope has received rave reviews from the dealers. But will any of them bid high enough to match the £300 valuation? I'm going to take a punt and start you off at 150 
160. 170. 180. 200. 210. 220. 230. 240. 250. 260. 270. Simon did say that this was the top, top, top end of writing slopes. He's not wrong. 280. Can I just let you know where I am? I'm going to be out, cos I wouldn't know where to place it. 290. I do really like it. I'll go 300 on it. I'm out. It's a very beautiful thing, but I'm out too. I'm going to join them. Simon thought quite a bit more. Well, not quite a bit more, but a little bit more. 300 is my top offer on that. Is that your final final? It's the final. It's yours. Oh. Hey! Oh. Hey! Fantastic! <laughs> Can I just ask you, what are you going to put in the secret compartments? A woman's heart is an ocean of secrets. I cannot tell you what's going wow. in it. <laughs> good, good. Good, good answer. <laughs> well, can I ask you what Simon valued is at? Yeah, Simon mentioned 300 plus. Mm. What did you pay for it? 155. Ten years ago. See, I find it amazing because go back another ten years and that would have been an absolute fortune, mm. wouldn't it, JB? Oh, you wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. Because <laughs> I'm half your age, AD, <laughs> with double the knowledge. <laughs> so my writing slope sold for £300, which was absolutely brilliant, virtually doubled my money, and I'm going to go out and buy a mountain bike now so I can go cycle round the lake. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 I'm well chuffed. Last up is Lisa, with something she hopes will sit well with the dealers. The item is very stylish, very functional. It's a mixture of fabric and metal. It's a timeless item. Is that a chair? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the sort of chair you could sit watching all creatures great and small while having your supper. Or maybe later on in the evening with a nice cut glass full of something a bit warming. Yes. <laughs> Lisa, welcome to the bidding room. Hiya, Nigel. And you Hiya, bought, Simon. Uh, you've bought a lovely chair with I've you. I've bought you a really interesting chair to have a look at. You have. Castelli, well-known Italian um, company, uh, very famous for the mid-century type of chair. But this is actually a stacking chair. Where this is slightly different to the ones that I usually see is obviously this it's got the desk. sort of uh, reading table. So that's quite unusual. The original design for these was by a chap called um, Piretti. Yeah, so I've heard Peretti. Of he did this design late 60s. This kind of chair was, was a big commercial hit at the time. Yes. But this is a later version of it. Could have been anything from 10, 20 years ago. You know, I mean, they're still going now. Are they? Still producing these designs of chairs. So there's no huge age to it as such, but... It's in the original 60s design. Oh, I can see that being very, very good in the dealer's room. Yes. Somebody tells me. Just a nice piece of design, yeah. isn't it? It's 60s design, but it's later, but it's got the look, nice condition, but I can still see the dealers going to round about... Yeah, I'm going to say £100. I'm going okay. to say £100. Mm. Is that sounds how good. Right? Yeah, that sounds brilliant. Great, great. Now, just to sum up, so that you have all the info to go into the dealer's room... Summing up, we've got Castelli chair, originally designed by Peretti, um, a later version of, but that doesn't matter, unusual with this fold-down table part, and just push the design element, the design form, it'll fly. £100 plus? Fingers crossed. Best of luck. Nice to meet Cheers. you. Cheers. Bye. I'm just going to put it down here. And I'm going to put that up here. Yes. And I'm going to put myself in here. And I'm going to do that. Could I have a cup of coffee, if you don't mind? On its way. And a small ham sandwich. <laughs> I think the valuation went really well. Um, Simon valued it slightly higher than I thought. We'll see what happens in the bidding room. 
Yeah. Hi. Hello. Hi. So you bought this mystery object all the way from Cardiff. I have. Would you like to see? I'd absolutely love to absolutely. see. If you wouldn't mind. I feel like Paul Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, very nice. Ooh. It's an Italian chair, I believe. You're right there, By Judy. a company called Castelli. And yep. they actually designed that chair, I think, for airports, I believe. Fantastic chair. Fantastic design. It's designed to link together as well. So if you wanted a row of conference oh, right. chairs. My only uh, criticism is that there's still quite a lot around. So that I would say there's a lot of the chairs around, but I haven't seen a lot of the chairs with the desk. And it's quite late production, I think, as well. Yeah. They're being a bit mean. They're playing a game. They're being a bit mean. I think <laughs> if They're you're working mean. from <laughs> home and you wanted something really stylish and iconic, and I think Castelli were very, very good at ergonomic design, That's so it wasn't word. just about the look, it yeah. was about how comfortable it was. That's true. I've never seen one with a desk, so I think it's worth an absolute fortune. Brilliant. I'll go and book my holiday to the Caribbean <laughs> You now. go and book it right now. When we're allowed. Uh, when we're allowed, yeah. <laughs> Have a sit down. It kind of has a school feel for me. It reminds me of being at school. Melissa, you're an exam. Carry on, please. Please, sir. You've got another 20 minutes, please. <laughs> I'm done. Listen, I've told you three times, Doctor. Detention. You're here till five o'clock. JB knows a lot about this as well. No, I'm too young. <laughs> He's still at school. You <laughs> should <laughs> <He's> right. Oh. <laughs> All right, Gran. <laughs> <laughs> College. Oh, <laughs> him. Lucy is the queen of chairs. She's actually written a book about chairs right. and could probably fill a museum with chairs. I didn't include this one, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'd say it was an 80s production. I can see it's got the early Quadrat fabric on it by Nana Ditzel. If we re-upholster chairs now, we go back to this fabric because it's really iconic. So, a question. What would you do with the money if you was to sell it today? Well, my husband actually bought the chair, so I would give half to him. He's just started getting into vinyl again, so he can buy himself some tidy albums. Fantastic. And the other half I would give to a charity that I help with, and we're called Uniformed, and we collect all the unwanted school uniforms and sports kit in our area, and we sort it and wash it, and we redistribute it to families who need a little bit oh, of help. That's great. Really good what cause. a great idea. Well, that's that a is. fantastic cause. Mm. The more I make, mm, the, the more, more we can clothe those children. Well, I think it's fab, so I think we should start the bidding. Bid away. The Castelli chair has intrigued mid-century fans Moses and Lucy. But will they or any of the others match the £100 valuation? £50. 50. 60. It's definitely worth more than that because there are not many of these chairs. I'm going to tell you where I'm at, Lisa. I'm out on it, but I am an auctioneer and I'm going to try my best to get you the best price possible off two people in particular, I'd Works say. Works and magic. So we've got £60. With Lucy here, you're going to go Fantastic 70. Fantastic price. You offered 50. Put yeah. another tenner in. The biggest problem is I do see a lot of them. Don't be negative. I've That's seen the it. There's quite a lot of them as well. They did make a lot of them. It's a mass-produced item. What is it with you, mid-century dealers? <laughs> You're so negative. <laughs> Quit your waffling on, Moses. Put another bid in. I'll give you 65. He's always going up in fives. It really annoys me. So I'll go to 70 to make it a rounder number. It just reminds me of school, and I'd like to leave those days behind. <laughs> so I'm not going to bid on it. 75. Where do you come You're from? You're getting there, AD. Right, come on, we're at £75 with AD, who buys French furniture, not mid-century, so surely one of you two can offer 80. I'll offer 80 because it's a good cause. I'm, I'm out, I'm afraid. Oh, thank yes. you, Moses. <laughs> Where are we at? £80 with Lucy, AD? I am going to go out again. That's Sorry. OK, thank you, AD. I'm not going to go any higher. I can get them cheaper. Sorry. I think you could get the chair cheaper. I don't think you could get the chair with the desk. That's the bit that I can't sell so easily. Um, 
so I'm actually going to have to keep it for myself. It's going to go into my son's room. It's going to be in your house. It's a one-off. £90. I'm going to have to start hanging them on the wall, these chairs. I've got so many chairs. That's what ceilings are for. I'm very happy at 80, Lisa. I'd be Come happy on, at 90. £90. You're the chair guru, so you're going to have a fantastic Ooh. chair. <laughs> it. That's it. You said I was the chair guru. £90. I'll give you another £10. £90. Deal! Deal! Fantastic. Thank you. What did Simon value that? Simon valued it at between 80 and 100. Oh, well done. I got the price that I was looking for, so I'm really, really pleased. I was quite surprised because I didn't know Lucy loved chairs so much. So Lucy actually bought it for herself and I believe her teenage son's going to be doing his homework on it very soon. Sorry for pushing you to 90 there, Lucy, but you must be happy with that. I haven't got one of those, so I'm, I'm really happy with it and hopefully my son will do his homework now.